Hello and welcome to Prof. Dale's property video number 30. I'm your host, Dale Whitman. In this video, we're going to provide an introduction to the concept of running covenants. In a minute, we'll explain what we mean by running covenants. But first, what's a covenant? Well, nearby landowners often make covenants or promises with one another. A covenant is simply a promise. They may promise things about how their property will or won't be used. They may talk about activities that they will or won't engage in on their property. They may talk about how they're going to maintain their property. Now, most of these covenants are what we call restrictive covenants. That is, they limit the burden party's activities on the land, their promises, in other words, not to do something. But some covenants are affirmative. That is, their promises actually to do something on the land. Both restrictive and affirmative covenants are covered by the same concepts under American law. There's really no difference between them. Now, what do we mean by a covenant running? Well, if neither party to a covenant has transferred his or her land, the covenants simply form an ordinary contract and it can be enforced with damages or usually with an injunction. And the concept of a covenant running really has no relevance. On the other hand, if one or both of the parties transfers his or her interest, then the question becomes whether the new owner is bound by or benefited by the covenants. And to answer that question, we have to talk about running covenants. U.S. law allows this to happen, even without an express assignment of the benefits or without an express assumption of the burdens, just by virtue of taking the land that was subject to the covenant the new party is now potentially bound or benefited by the covenants. It's automatic. If you get the land, you get the benefits or burdens of the covenants along with the land. Before we learn the legal rules that regulate this process, we have to know how to analyze the question. And this is critical. This is where many times law students go wrong. They want to jump in and talk about the legal rules for running covenants without first analyzing the facts so that they really understand what the basic issues in the question are. So we're going to learn how to analyze the facts. Now to do that analysis, we have to begin by understanding that every covenant has a benefit and a burden. And the running of the benefit and the running of the burden are really separate issues. Let's suppose in this example, we have A and B who own parcels of land side by side. B enters into a covenant with A by promising that B won't raise any pigs on B's land. Well, we can identify the benefited and burdened land. B's land owned by B is the burden parcel because it's a terrible burden not to be able to raise pigs on your land if that's what you want to do with it. On the other hand, A's land owned by A is the benefited parcel because it's a terrific benefit not to have to worry about pigs on the parcel next door to you. Now that we've identified the benefited and the burdened land, let's suppose that B puts some actual pigs on lot B, thereby violating the covenant that B made. A can sue B and A could recover damages without regard to any issues of covenants running with the land because neither parcel of land has been transferred. As I said a few minutes ago, this is just an ordinary contract litigation. Running of the covenants has no relevance at all because neither party has transferred their land after they entered into the covenant and before the violation occurred. However, either or both parties might transfer their land to new owners after entering into the covenant. For example, B, after signing the covenant, might sell B's land to B2. And then the question would be, since B2 has bought the burdened land, is B2 also bound by the covenant? The answer is only if the burden of the covenant runs with the land parcel, that is the burden parcel, parcel B. If the burden runs, then B2 will be bound by it. And if that happens, A can sue B2 for damages and can recover those damages. Notice that in this case, we're concerned only with the running of the burden with the burdened land. We don't care whether the benefit would run with the benefited land or not because the benefited land hasn't been transferred. Remember, the running of the burden and the running of the benefit are completely separate issues. And in this case, 
only the running of the burden with the burdened land is relevant. Now let's change the facts. Suppose A sells lot A to a new owner, A2, but B hasn't sold B's land yet. In other words, only the benefited land has been sold this time. Now B puts some pigs on lot B. And the issue now is whether the benefit runs with the benefited land, lot A, so that A2, the new owner of the benefited land, can sue B. We don't care if the burden would run with the burdened land on these facts or not, because the burdened land, lot B, hasn't been transferred. Now, it's possible that both parties will transfer their land after the covenant is entered into. A might sell A's benefited land to A2, B might sell B's burdened land to B2. Now B2 puts some pigs on lot B and A2 wants to sue B2. Now for this suit to succeed, for the court to find liability, we have to show both that the burden runs with the burdened land, that's lot B, and also that the benefit runs with the benefited land, that's lot A. Both benefit and burden have to run in this case. We can say that in general, to have a successful action to enforce a covenant, that is, for the court to find liability for damages, we must have both a plaintiff with benefited land and a defendant with burdened land. We might need to establish that the benefit or the burden or both run with the land, depending on which parcels have been transferred. So there's a basic process that we need to go through. First, we need to identify the covenant that's going to be enforced. Second, we need to identify the benefited and the burdened parcels with respect to that covenant. And third, we need to determine which of those parcels, the benefited, the burdened land, or both, or perhaps neither, have been transferred. Now, once you've done that, you can figure out whether it's necessary to make the burden run with the burdened land, to make the benefit run with the benefited land, or both need to run, perhaps, or perhaps if neither parcel has been transferred, neither the benefit nor the burden needs to run in order to have a successful lawsuit. Remember, the running of the benefit and the running of the burden are separate issues and you have to analyze them separately. Mutual sets of covenants can be kind of confusing. Let's suppose that A and B live side by side and each of them enters into a covenant with the other that says substantially the same thing. For example, each promises the other that they won't raise pigs on their property. Now you look at that and initially you might say, well, I'm not sure which is the benefited and which is the burden parcel. But the way to analyze that is to think that there are really two distinct covenants here. They may say the same thing, but one is a covenant from A to B and the other is a covenant from B to A. So what you need to do in order to identify the relevant covenant is just to ask yourself where the violation is. In other words, if it's a covenant not to raise pigs, where are the pigs? Well, wherever the violation is, that's the relevant burdened land and the other parcel will be the benefited land. So it's really quite simple to separate out the two covenants when there are mutual covenants and to focus on the one that's relevant to the facts. Before you apply the legal rules, in fact, before you even begin thinking about the legal rules, you have to go through the analysis of the facts of the problem as we've shown them above. You have to identify the covenant in question. You have to identify the benefited and burdened parcels. And by the way, we'll see in our next video, it's possible that there might not be a benefited parcel, but only a benefited person if the covenant is in gross. We'll explain that in the next video but you've got to identify the benefited and burden parcels. And third, you've got to determine which of those parcels benefited or burdened or both or neither have been transferred. Once you've done that, then you can state the issue and apply the legal rules that we'll cover in our next video. Stay tuned. That wraps up video number 30, our introduction to running covenants. In our next video, number 31, We'll talk about the legal rules for covenants to run at law, that is, when there's an action for damages. If you have questions or comments, email profdale01 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.